In this video, we're going to talk about getting to know the REST full API within NSX Manager. Now, the first thing you're probably asking yourself is what exactly does REST stand for? Well, the definition of a REST API as given is that it is a representational state transfer. And this was named by a man named Roy Thomas Fielding. I actually had to look up what REST stood for. But when you get down to it, what is a RESTful API? Well, a RESTful API is used to describe an architectural style characteristic of programs. Essentially, it's a way of communicating via your browser URL to a set of programs running on a server. Now, that may sound really vague and high level, and I'm keeping it that way on purpose. The best way to think of a RESTful API is a set of commands that you can put into your browser that each command has a bit of data associated with it. Your command and the data that's passed with it are parsed by the server as it's receiving this data, and then it's performing actions based on those commands and the data that's within that URL browser. Now, the database or the server can respond back with a ver from a RESTful API call and send back information based on what you've asked it for. So, if you've done a post or you've put a or you've done a put, uh, it will send back the response. Basically, if it was successful, if there was an error, you know what type of error, what happened. If you've done a GET request, it'll go ahead and send back the information you've requested. Now, there are going to be some port requirements, and the port requirements are going to be dependent on each individual implementation of the RESTful API. So typically, you're going to have port 80 and 443. Most commonly, it's going to be 443 is what you're going to have your RESTful API running over. But the individual application that you're communicating with may have a specialized port that they want you to be able to use to communicate for API calls. So how exactly does it work? Well, as you can see here, it's all done via HTTP requests. So the user uses HTTP requests for discovering the properties of certain objects, okay? So REST requests are gonna require you to first authenticate against the server. Now, sometimes that authentication is simply, can you connect to it? It doesn't require any username, doesn't any tokens or headers or anything. It just says, can you get access to me? Bam, here's the information. Most cases, though, you're going to have to supply a valid username and password. And like with NSX Manager, you have to supply the, the admin level password at a minimum. The other type of thing that REST functionality is going to allow you to do is use HTTP requests such as get, post, put, and delete, as well as push to go ahead and get information and push information into a, a program. Now, using the git, you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen, git's going to display all the tasks. So in this case, git task, post task, get a task with a specific ID, put a task with a specific ID, or delete a task with a specific ID. Now, the exact definition of what these requests are is very dependent on each individual vendor. There's not a one universal RESTful API that all customers can interact with. Each individual application is going to have to create its own set of API interfaces for you to go ahead and communicate with. So you'll see here, like on the right hand side, we're, us we're using slash tasks. And then one of the things we're doing is passing a specific ID to it. That may only be valid on whatever example they've picked here for the slide, but in another vendor, or another manufacturer, that is a completely invalid request. It's going to come back with a, you know, an unknown for you. So you need to make sure that when you are wanting to use a RESTful API or planning to use a RESTful API, that you go ahead and pick up the API guide or documentation from the vendor, and then they'll be able to tell you how to communicate with their system. So here we have some examples of some of the, dif the different RESTful API HTTP requests. We have get, put, post, and delete. Now, once again, these are going to be direct communications between you, the client, and you are connecting with an API endpoint. Now, that API endpoint takes that data and that request and processes it through to the database or the application, and then it's going to take whatever request you've done and act upon it. Now, depending again what you've done, you'll either get a response back that's going to be raw data or just an acknowledgement or the result of whatever action you've asked the server to do.